Remember what I said yesterday? Actually, I said this countless times. Most recently, I said it yesterday or maybe this morning. Whenever I posted my Space Jam 2 video, I think it was this morning. Anyway, shut the hell up, Casey. I'm, get to the point. I said something to the effect of, you never try to appease a woker or a communist because they're always going to want more. LeBron James figured this out the hard way. He has been sucking up to China for years now, and now they refuse to show Space Jam 2, which means in his acting debut... LeBron James' first film is set to lose over $100 million. The International Olympic Committee, they're finding this notion out the hard way too. Just like the NBA did, just like ESPN, just like everything else that refuses to take a stand against the woke agenda. The IOC has rules that outright ban any kind of political demonstration at the Olympics. It's called Rule 50. I won't bore you with reading the legal junk of the rule. Long story short, if you participate in the Olympics, you are not allowed to promote any kind of political agenda. Doesn't matter if it's a good cause, you can't do it. This year, the IOC has been under immense pressure from the Wokers to, to ease up on the enforcement of Rule 50. Now, instead of learning from the mistakes of the NBA, ESPN, the IOC went the other direction. They cracked under political pressure. The Olympics should allow for messages of diversity and anti-racism. The IOC did what most organizations do. They bent just enough to try and appease the Wokers while also not bending far enough hoping they wouldn't piss off people with common sense, otherwise known as people who are woke. The Olympic Committee decided that it would be okay for athletes to demonstrate politically. It's okay for you to promote your communist ideals, but they are only allowed to do so before the event starts, which means Gwen Berry can't put a shirt over her face during the national anthem anymore. Now, me personally, I don't want any political demonstrations, but, but, I am all for Gwen Berry covering her face because I don't want to look at it. I would urge the IOC to make an exception to the rule and allow Gwen Berry to cover her face at all times. But seriously, if they were looking to compromise, that seems like a reasonable compromise to me. I mean, if you're going to compromise on this, that's a fair enough compromise. However, as we all know, Compromise is a foreign term to the Wokers. They don't want compromise. They want what they want. And if you don't allow it, you're racist. You're part of the problem. More than 150 athletes penned a letter to the International Olympic Committee demanding they not punish people who blatantly violate their policy. Examples included in the letter of what would be considered a violation of Olympic rules are fist raising, kneeling, and other forms of meaningless virtue signaling. I couldn't find if the 150 athletes on this letter were from around the world or from just here in America. If I had to guess, my guess would be they're only from America because most other countries wouldn't allow something stupid like this. A few of the athletes who signed the letter are Tommy Smith, John Carlos, and our favorite, Gwen Berry. Now, I didn't see Megan Rapinoe's name on the list. Surprised me a little bit. Maybe she's there, maybe she's not. But Gwen Berry is. I actually had to look up Tommy Smith and John Carlos. I didn't know who the hell they were. Both were involved in the 1968 Olympics. They raised their fist in protest back then. But there's a big difference in 1968 America and 2021 America. Tommy Smith, John Carlos, back then, 1968, they were actually fighting for something. They were protesting against something. They were fighting for civil rights. What is Gwen Berry fighting for? Can someone please tell me what the hell Gwen Berry is protesting? We have been covering her on the channel for what? A month now? Maybe longer? Last four, six weeks, I have read more about Gwen Berry than I care to admit. I've listened to interviews. 
I've read magazine cover stories. Basically, I've done the legwork and suffered through the minutia so you guys wouldn't have to do it. That's why you guys watch me here on the channel. So you don't have to suffer through the agony of listening to a Gwen Berry interview. I do that for you. In all this time, though, in all this time, I have yet to hear Gwen Berry explain what it is she's fighting for, why she is protesting. I'm protesting systemic racism. No, no, try again. I'm protesting for my people. Okay, well, if that's the case, how come you're not in the streets of Chicago where your people are dying every day by the dozen? Of course, you know a good woke cause could not exclude LeBron James. It's the NBA offseason. LeBron is not competing in the Olympics, so there's really no reason for him to be in the news, besides the fact that his movie is banned in China and is about to lose millions of dollars. LeBron needs to get that story out of the news cycle ASAP. And what better way to accomplish that than by attaching his name to another SJW agenda? LeBron issued a statement through his company, The Uninterrupted, He's taking a stand against the injustice of the IOC silencing athletes. Here is part of that statement, quote, Rule 50 is a rule in the Olympic Charter that bans any kind of demonstration and prohibits any opinionated political, religious, or racial propaganda at the Olympic site in 2021. The only time an athlete is able to speak freely is at press conferences and to the media, but not on the Olympic podium when the world is watching. Simply put, we see this as a way of silencing voices, and as advocates for athlete empowerment, we take a stand against it. Sport is not neutral. When athletes speak up, whether from a stadium, gymnasium, or track, they start conversations and things change. Give athletes the chance to show up fully and to make change, end quote. Where do we begin? Where do we begin? Why don't we start at the beginning? Why don't we start with LeBron saying Rule 50 prohibits political, religious, and racial propaganda? Yes, that is exactly the point. Propaganda. I am so glad LeBron James acknowledged this because that is exactly what these people are pushing. Propaganda. Thank you, LeBron James. That might be the first honest thing that you have said in, I don't know, five years. Let's get to point number two. The only time an athlete is able to speak freely is at press conferences and to the media. Dude, you know you live in America, right? Everyone can speak freely here whenever the hell they want. Unlike in China, the country that you have pledged your devotion to, where people are never allowed to speak freely. If an Olympic athlete wants to promote an agenda, they have every right to do so on social media or even through the mainstream media. Pick a platform. You are free to say whatever you want. But it is not your right to use the Olympic platform to promote your personal agenda. Do we need to go over the difference again between a right and a privilege? No? Good. I didn't think so. Point three. We see this as a way of silencing voices. We are advocates of athlete empowerment. This is not a way of silencing voices. This is a way to keep the damn politics out of the Olympics, which should be apolitical. It always has been apolitical. And athlete empowerment? Are you kidding me? It's more like athlete entitlement. That's the real problem. Athletes have this sense of entitlement. You are not entitled to use someone else's platform to promote your own agenda. And the final point, sport is not neutral. When athletes speak up, things change. I happen to partially agree with this. Sports are not neutral anymore. They used to be, they used to be two years ago. It didn't matter if you were conservative, liberal, didn't matter. If you were at a sporting event, it did not matter. We all joined together to pull for the same team. Thanks to people like LeBron James, that's no longer the case. LeBron has made sports political. He ruined it for everybody. He's partially right, too, about when athletes speak up, things change. LeBron James spoke up, and he changed the NBA. He tanked television ratings, revenue, turned off 10 million viewers in the span of about two years. That's change. 
athletes do have the power to change things. Muhammad Ali sparked change. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar sparked change. But they were actually fighting for something. Athletes can spark change. If they are fighting for a cause, the majority of people will get behind. The bulk of the American population isn't down with the change that LeBron James is pushing. People in this country don't want socialism or communism. Go down to Miami, Little Havana. Ask the Cubans down there if they side with LeBron James and Gwen Berry. Go down to the southern border. Ask the people that are fleeing from Guatemala or Venezuela if they're down with the woke agenda. Once again, LeBron James is on the wrong side of the issue. People don't want political protest at the Olympics. They just want to watch the damn event. Matter of fact, people are starving for patriotism in this country. These political protests, the constant cries of racism, the entire woke agenda, people are tired of it. They're tired of hearing about it. And they're tired of hearing about it because America realized what this is really all about. To steal a phrase from Barack Obama, it's about the fundamental transformation of America. The problem is Americans don't want fundamental transformation. We like capitalism just fine. People are also tired of the hypocrisy. LeBron James pushes a socialist agenda while getting rich off of capitalistic ideas. One of the founders of Black Lives Matter is an admitted Marxist. Then she goes out and spends $4 million on real estate. That's not a very communist thing to do. If you were a real Marxist, you would redistribute that wealth. Bottom line is, the International Olympic Committee created this monster themselves. You don't appease wokers. This is just another example. You don't negotiate with these people. You take a stand against them. They're going to whine. They're going to complain. They're going to throw their tantrums. They'll call you a racist. Who cares? It's a hell of a lot better than dealing with the consequences of appeasing these people. All right, time to let me know what you think. Did the IOC make a mistake by bending their rules on political demonstrations? Give me your thoughts on LeBron James and Gwen Berry. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We got a lot of content coming up this weekend.